Orchids have an interesting place in an ecosystem. They are known as an apex family, meaning they are at the top of their ecosystem. A vast network of other elements must be present for them to utilise and survive. This is a primary reason as to why they are so wondrous. They have achieved amazing diversity and ecological roles due to the amazingly diverse world that supports them. However, vulnerabilities arise when relying on complex networks. The rapidly changing world has brought many members of this family to extinction and threatens many more. When you think of Australia, you probably think of the outback. Vast horizons of red sand and big rock formations. But there's so much more. Literally thousands of ecosystems all across it. Various combinations of life forms living together in various conditions. We're going to have a look at a couple of these ecosystems, and in particular orchids, and how they live and die in epic tales of survival within these ecosystems. And we'll start with rainforest. These complex networks that support orchids consist of a particular fungi to support their seed growth, particular pollinators that support fruiting, and of course the growing conditions must be just right, like for these guys enjoying scenic wafts of humidity in the wet tropics rainforest. As mentioned before, there are even different types of rainforest, ranging from dry rainforest in Victoria to vine-dominated rainforest scrub in Queensland, and of course the old growth rainforest massive iconic trees covered in ferns and other plants, such as orchids. All sorts of dangers exist in the rainforest. Unstable ground, unstable trees, and even unstable people. Dry can turn to soaked in a single storm, and we see where the rainforest gets its name. Often a hostile environment, it's important to remember how quickly things can turn from good to bad if venturing out to enjoy its beauty. Out here, it's not just the flowers that are loaded with colour. This prehistoric lizard, known as the Boyd's Forest Dragon, has remarkable camouflage and it's not afraid to use it. It prefers to remain still and avoid attention. Perhaps an unfortunate strategy when on a road. We have almost 1,000 species of orchids in Australian rainforests, growing in all sorts of scenarios and life forms. Large leafy terrestrials like this Christmas orchid with large spikes of curious human-like flowers. Small terrestrial apostasias, which are thought to be the oldest living ancestor of all Australian orchids. So old genetically, that it actually lacks the one thing that makes an orchid so. Fused reproductive organs, or a column. You'll also see orchids growing on rocks. This common oak orchid has a strong fragrance and attracts pollinators of all sorts. It can also be seen growing on trees as an epiphyte. This is where most orchids grow in the rainforest, in an elevated position which provides favoured humidity and light conditions. Rainforests are pretty much an endless source of inspiration. 
but their list of practical uses is presumably just as long. Rainforest timbers, medicines and foods are all abundant here. The rainfall and the soil types are often great for farming various types of food as well. And this is where we run into trouble. If natural resources aren't managed correctly, we start to feel the impacts of habitat loss. Recently, in 2017, Queensland was identified as one of the top 10 land clearers in the world. Land clearing is often done aggressively and without concern for sensitive environmental issues, which puts massive pressures on the land. Intricate microclimates and their components are lost forever. Of course, this impact is not limited to rainforest. The expansion of urban areas, rural farms and resource use put pressure on orchids and their supporting processes all over Australia. But it's not all doom and gloom. Realising the value of diversity and the services it provides, people all over Australia are pitching in to help minimise negative impacts to Australia's unique environments. Local clubs are controlling weeds, planting natives, sharing photos on social media and educating people to live smarter, which is easing pressure and slowly minimising loss. A quick search will likely reveal many groups in your area. You likely have unique skills that would greatly benefit them. Australia draws people from all over the world. Most will only get to see these sorts of things from a distance, but you can get your hands dirty. Come and learn from the lessons of the rainforest and become a better person from the things it has to teach us. Come and be inspired by this hostile but beautiful environment. <laughs>